This lesson covers securing data on your NTFS volumes. Before I talk about security on the NTFS file system itself, when we wish to grant security, we don't want to do it on a user by user basis. We want to create groups in Active Directory, add the users to those groups, and then give those groups permission on the NTFS file system. There are really three types of group I can create. I can create a global group. So a global group is created within the domain. It can contain users only from the domain in which the global group is created, but it's visible throughout the entire Active Directory forest and any domains that trust this domain. A domain local group is a group that can be used only within the domain it is created, but it can actually contain accounts from anywhere in any of the domains within the forest. A universal group is available through any domain in the forest and can contain users or groups from anywhere in the forest. So the universal group is really the most flexible. However, because it can contain objects from any domain in any forest, it's actually stored as part of the global catalog. So there is an increased overhead in terms of replication. Typically, you're going to use global groups in your environment. So I'm going to create a group just called Halo. And it's a global group. And then into that group, I'm going to add members. So I'm just going to add John117 and Cortana. And I can check their names. They're now a member of that group. On my file server, I have various folders available to me. And there's really two types of permission with NTFS. There's explicit and inherited. So for example, if I look at my HR folder, and look at properties and security, I will see permissions that currently exist. If I actually look at my advanced, what I'll actually see is most of these permissions were inherited from the parent E drive and were not explicit on this folder. But I can actually add permissions on a certain user, so I can actually say that Halo group. Check the group. And then I can say, does it apply to this folder? the subfolders of this folder and its files. And I have different levels of control. Full control means they can really do anything. They can delete content, create content, and change the permissions. Modify means they can read, write, delete files or folders, create new files and folders, but they can't change the permissions. Read and execute means they can read the file and start programs if they exist in this folder. List folder means I can list the content but not access the data. Read means I can read the content. Write means I can write content. So if I get someone full control, they can do all of these things. There are also advanced permissions, which give you more detailed sets of capabilities. For example, maybe I don't want them to be able to change the file, but maybe they can write some of the attributes. Maybe it's a metadata update. Maybe I want them to be able to change permissions and take ownership, but not other settings. So I've now explicitly set that permission on the folder. Also, permission entries can be to allow or deny. And the way the permissions work, an explicit deny will always override an explicit allow. Likewise, an explicit allow will always override an inherited deny or an inherited allow. So that's really the order explicit deny, then explicit allow, inherited deny, inherited allow, that's the order. So for example, if I actually add a new option, and you wouldn't normally do this, but I'm gonna actually say for my account, my user account, I'm gonna set the type to deny. And the reason you wouldn't normally do this is because I wouldn't normally set permissions on users, I wanna do it on groups. But for right now, I'm just gonna say a deny and apply that. So I'm actually a member of the administrators group. So it's actually warning me that the deny will explicitly override any allows I have. Denies can be very dangerous. It's hard to track what happens. Generally, permissions are cumulative. If I'm a member of two groups and one group has read permission, one group has write, then I get read and write. But denies will always override those as previously stated. So I'm now explicitly denied from this HR folder. So now if I actually go in and log in as that user, so I'm gonna to navigate to that file system. I see the folders, I can browse through them, except for HR. That explicit permission is actually blocking me accessing it. 
There is actually another way to do security in Windows Server 2012 called Dynamic Access Control. Dynamic Access Control is actually based instead around the idea of classifying data. So for example, on this folder, I can classify the data as confidentiality high. And the way this now works is for users to be able to access this data, if I go to my security advanced, we can see the policy I'm using. And it's actually now based on user attributes rather than group memberships. So for example, that particular rule is actually based around the users must be a Spartan. So if I view my effective access, I have permissions because he's a Spartan. But if I was to take out that title and make it not a Spartan, and then view it again, then I don't have access. So dynamic access control removes the need for lots of these global groups. It removes the need for setting permissions on files and folders. And instead, I just create these central policies that are then applied to all my file servers. But it does require all of your data to be classified, which is a huge undertaking in most environments. And initially, at least, you'll focus on using the NTFS permissions to secure your data.